I have fingers. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Yay. Hi, so because it's on my phone, I'm not sure how much of me you can see, but there you go. Oh, no. It's great. I appreciate it. This is a, we're all learning the new thing. And I, every time this happened to me yesterday and it magically worked and now here we are and it's magically working. So excellent. Thank you for um, your patience. Oh my gosh. Well, thank you. Thank you to everybody who's on watching too. We're ready to finally get started. So hopefully we'll have more people join and stuff too, now that we're actually on uh, doing our thing. So um, first, thank you so much for joining. Um, I'd love you for you to quickly introduce yourself and then I'll kind of dive in and tell people what we're doing. Of course. Well, thank you for having me. Um, uh, as you know, so hopefully some of the folks who are on know, uh, my name is Marina Torres and I am a candidate for LA city attorney. Um, and most recently I've been a federal prosecutor here in Los Angeles for several years. And I worked, uh, for president Obama before then, uh, at the department of Homeland security, working on immigration issues of particular importance to me because I'm first generation. I am a daughter of formerly undocumented immigrants, uh, here in the Los Angeles area. And so for me, it was a really important um, honor, to be honest, to be able to work for the president on such important legislation. And now, you know, working in the criminal field as well, I think those are two big issues that really resonate with the people here in Los Angeles. And I'm grateful for the opportunity to be running for such an important seat and bringing my experience and both professional and personal to that seat. So thank you for having me. Awesome. Well, that is so, um, I really appreciate you sharing your story. I think that's a great place to start is from personal experience and your own story. So um, for those who don't know, uh, Rise Together is um, the organization hosting this, especially if you're coming in from uh, Marina's Instagram. And we started because we know that Los Angeles is in crisis, but that it doesn't have to be this way. Um, together, Angelinos can create positive lasting change. Uh, and a really critical way to do that is through being involved in local elections. Uh, we are hosting this candidate interview series to make the 2022 municipal elections a little bit more accessible for everybody. Um, just to be clear, this is not part of our endorsement process, and it's not an indication of support or opposition to any candidates. Uh, we're just here to get to know candidates and, and give you the opportunity to get to know our community. So with that, um, I would love to just kind of start with the most basic question, which is what does a city attorney do and how does it affect our lives? Of course, and I would say it, it you know, it might be sound basic but it's it's really not i mean it's probably the most common question that i get on the campaign trail and you know qu quite honestly i'm really looking forward to changing that for los angeles because the position of city attorney is one that's so incredibly important uh, i always tell folks that in my position as a as a federal prosecutor you know i take down cartel members, I take down corrupt officials, uh, you know, I'm, I'm going after the worst of the worst. And that I think is what really, you know, people think of when they think of a prosecutor. But quite frankly, a city attorney is the prosecutor that's closest to the people here in Los Angeles. So um, roughly half the office is in charge of civil litigation and the other half is criminal. So I would kind of break those um, the responsibilities of the city attorney in that way and obviously on the on the civil side it's defending the city but also filing affirmative litigation on behalf of the city so for instance uh, workplace employer violation for employers that just have refused to um you know abide by workplace wage and hour laws right it's completely within the purview of the city attorney to file active civil litigation on behalf of the people of los angeles in fact just recently i believe it was today um the city council approved uh, a ghost gun regulation and and that's something that's actually very um close to my heart because again as a prosecutor we see these wind up and um in crime scenes all over and in violent crime scenes especially and with the uptick in crime it's it's i think an area that it, we're going to continue to see hopefully more um more attention put to that so that's that's a, on the civil side and a little bit on the criminal as well uh the purview of the city attorney is criminal misdemeanors so again things that uh you may not think you know when you're watching um 
when you're watching TV shows and you're seeing all the cartel members being taken down, that's not exactly it. But the, the areas that really are affecting Angelinos, you know, city permitting, um, you know, I mentioned the ghost gun, the street vendor life right? Things like that. And then finally, I would say the third prong of the responsibilities of city attorney is advising city council of the legality of various ordinances and pieces of legislation that they'd like to see passed and drafted. Awesome. Well, that was really helpful. Thank you so much um, for giving that overview. That was great. Um, and I'd love to get to know you a little better. Obviously, you kind of shared a bit about your background. Happy to hear more about that. And also just kind of want to know, like, what are your priorities if you're elected? Why are you wanting to serve in this capacity? Sure. And a large reason of a large part of why I want to serve, quite frankly, does have to do with my background. As I mentioned, I'm a child of undocumented immigrants. And, you know, growing up in this country, we, we you know, my family came to this country because of the promise of what we could do. And it's, it's a story that's so common among Angelinos. It's nothing unique to me the story of people coming in and, and looking for a better life. And just gradually over the years, I I think like a lot of people in Los Angeles, certainly a lot of people at Rise Together have grown increasingly concerned about where LA is going. You know, people are fleeing, businesses are fleeing, the state of homelessness is out of control. And the more that I looked at it, the more that I really contemplated, like, where can I, you know, serve? Where can I, where does my skill set best fit here? Um, it was continuing the role of prosecutor. Uh, I have loved being an attorney. I'm not a politician. I don't think that there are other, uh, quite frankly, positions that I that I would be um, that I would be running for. It really is because I've enjoyed and I'm very good at being a prosecutor and see that as a next step in my service to you know to, to Los Angeles and to the state of California. But it really was the concern of you know the the city and the state being in crisis and. It's not a question of money. That's a thing that I that I frankly I found most alarming. I think that um, corruption is rampant, as we're seeing. Um, uh, not every day, but it seems like almost every day we're seeing the corruption. That's you know that's that's really endemic to LA city politics. And you know, I hope hoping to be a change to that and hoping to really crack open um, a lot of what's been going on. But it, it's not a question of money. There's more than enough money being put into you know the, the addressing the homeless issue, right? Like we Angelinos, we've, we've agreed to tax ourselves, right? Which is something that's really hard to do. Try to <laughs> try to get people, right? To get money out of their pockets um, to, to fund an initiative. And yet we've done that, you know, repeatedly. And it's not a question of money. And so I would say the first three things that, and they're all a little intertwined, homelessness is obviously the number one, I would say two and three issue here in Los mm -hmm. Angeles. And it's not a question of money. Uh, I, I really think we need to be adding more short-term housing. So much of the money and attention has been going towards long-term housing options. And and that's good. That needs to be addressed as well. But we're frankly not seeing our elected officials act as quickly as they should, given the state of emergency that I feel and I think others feel we're in right now. It's a human tragedy what's going on. And the only people that I really am blaming are the people you know, in charge, the electeds who just haven't been acting quickly enough. And, you know, I, I don't know where they live, but it's it's on the front minds of everybody that I know that lives in Los Angeles. And, you know, the part, the role of a city attorney there is going to be enforcement. And I think that that is something that we have to begin talking about, you know, and it has to exist in conjunction with services and housing. You can't just, uh, you know, I want to be very clear. I'm not talking about just you know, heavy handed enforcement, but enforcement is a really crucial and important third prong of the solution. And right now, you know, our current electives are just almost exclusively taking too long and focusing on the wrong things. So homelessness, public safety, uh, and corruption are my big three issues. And like I mentioned, they're all intertwined because the yeah. more that corruption is rampant, you know, that's less money and less attention being put into the areas and the problems where we really need more attention and more focus. Yeah, no, that is awesome. And as you mentioned, obviously there's a lot of conversation around corruption and also just kind of people saying we voted to literally tax ourselves and yet we're not seeing the results of, of the thing that we actively want to help. Um, yes. So how as the city attorney, could you help to make not only the um, 
like justice system in the city more transparent, but also the policy making process. Yeah, no, and absolutely. And I mean, I think that one of the things is, frankly, having a very open conversation, right, and being very transparent, being a very public facing public official. I mean, I'll loop back to how we started this conversation, you know, with your question of, you know, what does the city attorney do? And for too many people here in Los Angeles, they don't know who the city attorney is, they don't know what they do, because they're largely been an absent um, entity in folks' lives. And I'm really looking forward to changing that, because you, once you have that transparency, once you have that public accountability, everything trickles down from that, you know, you, you have a much more open approach to governing. And people can put a face to the city attorney and they're, you know, and, and by extension connect all of the things the city attorney should be doing to you. Yeah, that, thank you for that. Um, also just kind of speaking specifically around, you spoke to homelessness, which I so appreciate. I think another couple things that um, we have found that Angelinas are really concerned about are both um, affordability the fact that we love the city, but many people have to leave or end up in homelessness because they simply cannot afford to live here. Uh, and then also kind of on a, on a separate, um, but maybe somewhat similar road, kind of the uptick in crime and, and people's concerns around that. I'd love to hear uh, from you how, as city attorney, you can enact policies that uh, make the city more affordable or, and prevent crime. Sure. And again, here in the rule, because the city attorney doesn't actually enact any of the legislation, right? It's a little bit more limited. But I mean, quite frankly, anything that the city attorney and the city attorney's office can do to make, you know, housing easier, right? To build more housing, which I think is, takes so long and is so expensive in Los Angeles. And that has, you know, and that, that has an effect on affordability, right? I mean, when you just, when developers always make that cost calculation, right? They're always looking to see, is this, is this going to be, a house that I can sell for how much it's going to cost me to, to build this, right? And it's no, it's no surprise, as you mentioned, right, that we have such an affordability crisis. And you're right, it leads to people literally get, having to go on the streets or, how, or, or moving out, you know, the, the folks that can afford to do so. And it's very apparent. I mean, people are leaving Los Angeles. People are leaving California. A good friend of mine actually just moved to Austin, and she was telling me that um, move, they're, they're having a hard time having enough moving trucks here in Los Angeles and in California because they're all going out of state. And it's actually cheaper if you do a round trip, I think, um, because again, it, it's that much of a problem that moving trucks, they can't, they can't literally keep them in Los Angeles long enough. And that's really a concern. I mean, because when we are, when we start to lose our people, we start to lose our businesses. And it, it's really, I really do think that in 2022, it's a crucial pivot point. Um, you alluded to this earlier, those elections, we're going to have so many folks on the ballot and it's an incredible chance to really change the character of Los Angeles and where we're going. You know, this, this pivot point, um, it's, it, I can't emphasize it enough. It really is a crucial point of reflection and action for voters in this city. Um, and, and to your point about the, the safety concerns, it breaks my heart. I mean, I, these are the cases that I, I do, you know, I do corruption cases and money laundering and, and you know, uh, drug organizations and to see the victims, you know, do it. And I, I've posted a little bit about this on my social media as well, because it, it's a concern. I mean, folks that are elected officials, you have a responsibility to make sure that people can afford to live in your city and feel safe. Right. And these are people going to work, people walking around downtown, people literally just walking their dog and, you know, feeling like they're going to be safe coming back home. And right now there really is a crisis in terms of how safe people are feeling because it's, you know, every, and it's happening everywhere. Um, so I think that, and I don't, I don't think that this is contradictory to, a, you know, reforming how we think of the justice system. You know, my, during my entire career, I've been very reform minded, um, in terms of, you know, I, I became a prosecutor, in fact, because I, I do profoundly believe in restoring um, and, and reforming justice from within. From within. Um, so I don't think it's it's the opposite. But I think in a city attorney, when it allows you as a prosecutor to focus on, frankly, the crimes that really do matter and prioritize those as opposed to, you know, 
citing street vendors because they don't have, you know, the proper license, right? And I think when you an incredible position uh, being a prosecutor because you have so much discretion, you have so much power. But it, when you use that power to prioritize going after the really bad criminal actors, our entire city is going to be better off. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Thank you so much. And I know we're pretty much, I think we're out of time, um, but I would love, first of all, um, if you're jumping in here, you can find um, Marina's Instagram, just like it's here like you can just click the top and find her instagram but um i'd love to for you to give like where people can find you if you have any last words and then we can jump off sure uh my instagram is torres for los angeles so that's probably the best way to find me or my uh, and all this information is on my website marina torres.com straight and easy um in terms of last words you know like if I can't emphasize enough just how important it is to come out and vote in 2022. I think for those of us that are really frustrated and, and concerned about the way things are going in Los Angeles, it's your opportunity to elect so many people in such powerful positions. Uh, I, I hope, you know, you'll learn more about me on my website, on my social media, and hopefully I've earned your support. Um, but more important than anything is come out and vote and stay engaged, you know, and I look forward to having more conversations with the good folks that rise together. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. And for those who are on live, um, if you caught the end of this, uh, or you want to share it, we're going to post it on our Instagram, and it'll also be on YouTube here in the next few days. Um, so we just appreciate people's support and really appreciate you getting on to talk to us. We'll have more interviews coming up and just really are excited to give people the opportunity to know more about 2022 and the election coming up. So thank you again for taking the time and thank you to everybody watching and we will see you soon. Thanks for having me. Of course. Bye.